Hey guys and my dear Compose friends, welcome back to a new video. In this video we will implement the search functionality here in our Pokédex app. Let's see how that works. Say so if I just search for Bulbasaur for example, then Bulbasaur displays, surprise. If I search for Mewtwo, then you can see it's a real-time search. That is cool, it's an offline search. The disadvantage here is that, well, it's an offline search. We only are able to search those Pokemon that we actually loaded from our API that we already paginated. I would love to have a remote search here, but the API sadly does not offer that. So we have to use it like I do here. You could, of course, load all Pokemon at once and then always find every Pokemon when searching. Um, that would work if you cache your Pokemon list. So you really only query the whole list once, then save it locally. Um, that would be fine, then you could search all Pokemon in a quick way. But that is too much for this course, so I will just implement it like this, like here. So if I search for Dialga, for example, which is a Pokemon, it does not find it because I didn't scroll that far. So let's jump into our project and first of all I actually want to fix a little bug from the last video. A little thing I forgot, let's launch this up here and show you what is what it is what I'm talking about here. So that is now the app we actually work on in our course and pagination seems to work fine but it actually doesn't. Um, sometimes it calls getting um, a new new Pokemon twice um, maybe we can see that here. You can see here is Nidoking, King and here is Nidoking King again. So it it sometimes loads 20 Pokemon twice and adds these to our list. The fix is very easy. Um, a thing that I actually forgot here in this if condition where we check if we should paginate. We also want to check if is loading is actually false. So we only want to be paginating when uh, is loading is actually false, so when we're not already loading new entries. And then if we relaunch this, we can see now it should actually work. Pokemon should only be loaded once. So you, you saw that. Here is Nether King, and we only have it once in our list. So that is, of course, how it's supposed to be. Anyways, in this video we will implement the search, which will be almost solely happen in uh, our Pokemon list view model. And the way this will work is, well, we have our Pokemon list here, which is just a list of all these Pokédex list entries that are currently displayed in our app. Now, if we want to search in our app, we of course need to replace that list with only the search results. And when we stop searching, we need to replace it back with the initially loaded results. So we basically just check as long as there is text in our search field. As long as that is the case, we display the search results. And if the text is empty, we display the initial Pokemon list instead. So we need actually a cached Pokemon list here. So private variable cached Pokemon list which will be just an empty list of pokédex list entry so initially when we before we start the search we will save this list so the list of the loaded pokemon in this list so basically just to back up that data in case after the search we want to um, display this list again then we can just swap these lists so we just um, basically reinitialize this pokemon list with what we had before then we need a private variable is search started or rather starting um, which is set to true initially this will just be helpful to actually um, save our initial pokemon list in this cached pokemon list only once when we actually before we actually start that search and then finally we will have a state is searching which is a mutable state of false. So this will be actually true as long as we display search results. So this one basically only um, is only true if our search field is empty. So we're just about to start a search. And this one 
as long as search results are actually displaying. So as long as the search field actually contains something and we display search results. And then we can create a function here, search Pokemon list, which will take a search query, type string. And first of all, we want to determine uh, the list of Pokemon. We actually want to search something in here because initially it is this Pokemon list. But if we actually already searched something in that Pokemon list, then we will, um, then that Pokemon list here will actually be the list that contains the search results. And this cached Pokemon list will be the list that just cached um, the Pokemon list. So we can display all the Pokemon afterwards again. That's, that's confusing, I know. Let's um, just see how that works. It's not that complicated. So we just have a variable list to search. And we set that equal to if is search starting. So if our text field is basically empty and we're just about to start a search, then we set it to Pokemon list at value because then our cached Pokemon list does not contain any entries. So then we just say, okay, we want to search in all of our Pokemons here. And else, so if we if we already typed at least one character, then we will have saved this Pokemon list instead of our cached Pokemon list and our Pokemon list then contains the search results for that one character. So in that case, we don't want to search um, the Pokemon that are actually only representing the search result. Instead, we again want to search all Pokemon which are then saved in the cached Pokemon list. So then we return a cached Pokemon list. And then I want to launch a coroutine uh, in view model scope and in the default dispatcher. So the default dispatcher is just used for CPU operations that are just a little bit too much for the main thread because we search in, in a potentially long list. I don't want to do that on the main thread. Instead, I launch a coroutine and the default dispatcher is perfect for that. First of all, I want to check what happens if, if our query is actually empty. That means we actually were searching something and then removed the text and erased the text basically so that now we are not searching anymore and now we want to display the initial Pokemon list again. So what we want to do is we want to set Pokemon list at value. So again, that is the list that is displayed in our actual um, lazy column. We want to set that to the cached Pokemon list. So we basically just want to reset it to the list it was initially. We also want to set is searching that value to false because now we are not searching anymore. And we set is search starting to true because now we could start a search again, but we're not searching. And we want to return out of launch here. Then if that was not the case, if our query is not empty, that means we want to search something. So we can get the search results here using our list to search dot filter so we now want to filter that list, of course, and we want to only contain those entries that have a Pokemon name that contains the search query. So here we now not just need to return a Boolean in that Lambda function if we want to keep that entry or not. And we want to keep it if it.pokemon name that contains our search query. We can actually also trim that search query. So we just remove leading and trailing spaces. And we want to set ignore case to true here. So we don't care if it's upper or lower case. Now I also want to add another condition here that we potentially want to consider when searching. And that is if it dot number dot to string is actually our search query dot trim. So that just allows us to also search by um, the Pokemon's number. So if we enter 150, then Mewtwo will pop up. And then after that, we want to check if is search starting. So if we're, um, that is basically just a condition that will fire off the first time we search. In that case, we want to cache our whole Pokemon into our cached Pokemon list. So we say uh, cached Pokemon list is equal to Pokemon list at value. And then we set is search starting to false. And finally, here we want to set 
Pokemon list at value to our results. So these results are now the filtered Pokemon list. And if we set the Pokemon list at value to these results, these will automatically be displayed in our lazy column because we also use the same list here in our pagination function. And we also want to set a searching that value to true because now we are searching. Then we go to Pokemon list screen. And here where we paginate, let's actually include the, the state first. That is searching by remember your model that is searching. And then here where we, where we check if we should paginate, we want to include that we are not searching. So we only want to paginate, of course, if we're not currently displaying the filtered results, because then this condition alone would also be true because we scroll to the end of the list. But since we display the search results, we of course don't want that. So then that is actually it for the search. Let's run our app and see. Hopefully it works. So there we go, it loaded. Let's scroll a little bit. So we actually find something. And if we now enter something, for example, Charizard, it does not happen because I forgot to implement the functionality to actually trigger our function in our model. We, we didn't even call it. Let's scroll up in our Pokemon list screen. Um, here to our search bar. This block of code gets now called whenever we type something. And here we can call view model, which we don't have here. Let's implement that as a parameter. View model of type Pokemon list view model is equal to hill navgraph view model. And then here we call view model, uh, oops, model dot search Pokemon list with it, which is our um, search bar text. And by the way, where we are already at the search bar. I want to fix a little bug here. Um, thanks for the person who mentioned that in the comments. Um, that is actually here when on focus changed, when we change the focus of our search bar, we display the hint if we are actually not focusing uh, the search bar. But in case we already entered something in the search bar, uh, then we don't want to display the hint as well. So we just add and text, which is the search bar text, is not empty. But that is it. Now we can run it again. So let's see again. Scroll a little bit. Now search for Charizard. OK, now we can see the search is working perfectly fine. And if I now search for Mewtwo, you can see we don't find it because we didn't scroll that far. But if we do, then yeah, now it should work. Mew2, and there it is. Mew is also there. So the search seems to work just fine. Thank you for watching this far, and I wish you an awesome day. See you in the next video of this playlist. And yeah, just let me know if you are actually learning something that is useful for you if you are able to make real Jetpack Compose apps with these videos. Um, I would be very interested in that if these are actually helpful. And uh, yeah. Wish you a nice day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.